Hey everyone, welcome to the sixth video in the Unity Animator Controllers for Neo FPS Firearm series. In this video, we're going to be looking at an animator feature called Substate Machines, uh, how you can use them to group sequences of animations together, and then how to use them to turn full spaghetti animator controller setups, just complete rat's nests, into much cleaner and more understandable graphs. So let's crack on. So the simplest thing to do to show you what a substate machine is, is just create one here. So right click and create substate machine. Boom. So this node with the wedged ends is the substate machine. And if we double click to enter this, you can see that this looks just like an empty animator controller. It has entry, it has any state, it has a link back up to the base layer. So if we click that, we can hop between them. It has another special node called exit. You do actually get this in the root of the controller as well, but it kind of doesn't make any sense there in all honesty. We'll look at this one a bit later on anyway. And then, yeah, just like a regular animator controller, you would drag an animation in here. This orange line shows that it's now the default entry state since it was the first thing we added. Now you want to be careful not to use the set as layer default state. Uh, that you would use in the root because this actually ignores the substate machine and will apply to the whole controller layer. So you can see how that goes straight in there. Let's set that back. And then instead, if you do want to change it, you have to right click on the entry node and select set state machine default state, which allows you to set the transition to another node, just like adding a regular transition. Other than that, you're free to add states and blend trees or even other substate machines in here, just like the regular animator controller. And then from any of your states, you can make a transition to exit. And that will essentially act like the exit of a regular state. So we can then transition out of the substate machine to something else. Anyhow, let's see this in action so you can get a better feel for it. And what I'm going to do to demo this is to take the simple assault rifle here in the tutorial scene. It has its shooting and its reload and the like. And I'm going to add a very simple idle flex setup. So occasional flavor animations while the gun is in idle. So here I am in the animator controller for the assault rifle again. And since we're looking at extending the idle, let's create a substate machine to replace it. We'll call this idle and flex. Select this. Control C, enter the substate, Control V. And that pastes a copy of the idle state in here as the default. And we also want to add in our idle flex one and idle flex two. Now, these animations are super placeholder. They're purely to demonstrate the process. They're not some amazing hand flourishes or something. They're just static poses that are different enough from the idle pose to be obvious that they're happening. Anyhow. Transitions. We want to go from idle to flex one. We don't want an exit time because we don't want it to wait for the idle to finish looping. Let's make the duration normalize time and then 0.25 sounds good to me. And then we also want to make a transition back. So 0.25 again. 0.75 means that it will actually finish blending at the end. And then this one does want an exit time. So then this will go back to idle when it completes. Let's do the same here. 0.25, no exit time. So since we're not using an exit time, we do get an error saying that we need a condition. Uh, we'll sort that in a second. But for now, we need a transition back. So 0.75, 0.25. So with those sorted, how do we actually trigger the transitioning back and forth into here? Well, what I've done is I've created a script called idle flex to handle that. So let's have a quick look. So this script, we're putting on the same object as the animator. We have a reference to the animator here, and we can grab that in a wake using get component animator. And then whenever the object's enabled, we start this coroutine here which just loops around endlessly until the coroutine stopped from the outside. And all this coroutine does 
is it waits for a random number of seconds between min and max flex interval. Uh, these are up here, and we can set these in the inspector. And then once it's waited for that random time, it sets the flex index here. So this is the name of an integer parameter on the animator controller. And we set this between naught and num flexes. Again, we can see that property up top. Uh, defaults of two, but we can change it in the inspector again. And lastly, it sets this trigger here. So flex trigger. So to use this, we need flex index and flex trigger. Let's copy that and then let's go back to the controller. Okay, so back in here, we need a trigger parameter called flex trigger. And we need an integer called flex index. And the way we're going to use these is by modifying these transitions into the flexors. First of all, we add a flex trigger condition. So this actually initiates the flex. But we also need to choose which by using the flex index trigger. And here we're going to say this equals zero. And then in this one, we need the flex trigger. And just to be safe, we'll add this flex index. And we'll just say it equals to one. Since this transition is evaluated after the other flex transition, you actually don't need this index. But adding it can make it easier to understand and can be useful if you wanted to add more flexes down the line. So there we have it, equals zero, equals one, and then back on completion. Now, if we were to go to, where is it? Our simple assault rifle. This is the object for the animator. Uh, let's just drag the idle flex script on here. Okay, so the script will now initiate the flexing, but the other thing we need to do is to set this new substate machine to replace the original idle state. First up, make a transition here, and this is to the substate machine as a whole. You can choose to go to an individual state within it, but we have our entry state set up, so uh, let's just go to the substate node. So settings wise, has exit time, and we'll just knock it down to 0.1 to blend from the draw. Okay, and then the other thing we need is to transition to reload here and then reload back to idle. This one is a bit more involved, so we'll look at that in a minute. But first, let's just hit play. And we should get at random intervals. There we go, a little hand pop. And those are those janky proof of concept flex animations. Of course, if we hit reload, then nothing visually happens. So let's sort that one next. Now, there's three different ways that we can do this. One of them is by far the simplest for this gun, and that's just to make a transition from any state to reload using the reload trigger. And then we transition back to the substate machine as a whole. Yeah, same as, exit time 0.9, duration 0.1. So that's one way to do it. It's nice and simple, but it's just a little bit constraining since we're essentially saying we'll interrupt absolutely everything to reload. The scripts that trigger that need to be set up to not interrupt anything important in that situation. Another way would be to make a transition from here. Now you would think that this should just work, but it's not that simple, unfortunately. The reason for that is that we actually need to exit the substate machine for the transitions from it to be used. I find this to be needlessly clunky. But to reach that transition, we actually have to connect each state within the subgraph to the exit node. The thing that makes this especially painful is that the any state node here is actually any state within the entire controller layer, not just within the substate machine. That means we can't use that to transition to exit. In fact, it just won't let you connect those two nodes together at all. So what we need to do is we make a transition from here, make a transition from here, and make a transition from here. Every one of them needs the reload trigger. Exit time, 0.75. Yeah, that's fine. So 
idle. Add the reload trigger. And add the reload. Oh yeah, we do want to switch off the exit time on this one. And then transition duration, we can do much smaller. So now, if we hit play, then we can reload and everything works. And we still get the different flexors. Now, there is a variation on that last option. And that is, we just delete these. Go up a layer and delete that as well. So the other way is instead of transitioning to exit, we can actually make a transition to the reload state directly from within here. Voila. And then to set each of these up, we need the reload condition. Reload condition. Now for this one, we want no exit time and make it nice and short. And then this one, reload, keep the exit time. So that should be all good. And now if we go up a level, what you'll see is we have this connection here. And the three arrows are the three separate transitions. Selecting that transition, and we can switch between them. So that's the other way to do it. We can hit play now. And again, it works. So personally, I would go for the exit node version or for simple setups, just the any state version. This direct to state version just adds a bit of maintenance overhead that I don't think is worth it for that one less transition that you need. Anyhow, that was that. So there's one other thing that I want to show you quickly. And that's how you can use these substate machines to clean up spiderweb animator controllers. So here I have an animator controller set up to the old David Stempfer's low poly sample AK. This is tweaked from the original to remove a couple of things and set up the various transitions. But the reason that this is such a mess is because we have all of these different connections that overlap each other. Since this weapon has sprint animations, along with separate aiming versions of the idle and the firing, the bigger one-shot animations, like reload, need to correctly transition to each of those to work. For example here, we have any state to reload, and then that goes to idle, or it goes to run, or it goes to aim in at the same time. If we look in the state, you see three transitions. Same goes for the second reload here, and the shooting. And the problem is that there's no way to position all of these states on the graph so you don't get transitions overlapping each other, and it quickly becomes impossible to read. But this is where the substate machine controllers come in. So if I open this one up, then functionally, this is exactly the same as that previous spider web, but it looks much more similar to the basic new FPS demo weapons. So we have draw and holster, exactly the same as the normal setup. We have the two reloads here. So ammo left and out of ammo. These just use a normal reload trigger plus an empty parameter. Here it's false for reload ammo left, while here it's true. And then instead of going to an idle state, they go to this subgraph here. So if I open this up, then this gives you the different aiming. So idle, aim in, aim idle, aim out. So together, those form a loop. And then the aim in and aim out can both interrupt each other. Over here, at any state, we have shooting. So we have fire, and we have aim fire. Fire exits to idle, while aim fire exits to aim idle. So that's all nice and simple. The only bit of weirdness is how we deal with this running here. So essentially what I've done for that is straight away on the entry, here it goes into idle as the default state, but I've added an extra transition here. And this means if run is true on entry, we'll actually bounce across to the run state. I've also done one from idle as well. So this one here. And then when run is true, we come from idle to base layer. So yeah. And then when this completes, no exit time because we don't want it to have to finish its uh, current step before we do it. And then the fixed duration as we blend straight back into the subgraph here. And breaking the animator controller in two like that just makes it a hundred times easier to understand and to maintain as well.
All of this handles your reloading, your raise and your lower, and bouncing back and forth to running. And then this handles your idling and aiming along with your shooting. Anyhow, I hope that was useful. In the next video, we'll take a look at how the aiming and the sprinting actually work for this weapon. If you have any comments or questions, then feel free to hop on over to the Discord and say hi. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.